This is a long one. Go to chapters in the description to skip ahead at any time. Hey guys, it's Amy. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all having a wonderful day as always. So today I want to talk to you about Kelsey Thomas, who is accused of killing her five-year-old daughter named Chloe. This is Kelsey Thomas on the day of her arrest. And this is another picture of Kelsey Thomas just months prior to her arrest. And this is her beautiful little girl, Chloe Marie, who was five years old when she died under very unusual circumstances. I feel like there's way too many of these cases where parents are killing their children. And this is just like the Cheyenne Harris case, which I've also covered. The link will be below if you want to check that video out. This is a really sad case and it's kind of funky. I don't know if she's going to be convicted because... Kelsey Thomas was already on trial just recently. And yes, that is a current picture of her from the trial. Uh, she's not looking so hot, but she went on trial for first degree murder and child endangerment. She was found not guilty for child endangerment, and there was a mistrial for first degree murder. And although several people were probably very surprised by this, I understand the verdict. I disagree with the verdict, but I do understand it because there was a lot of confusion. First and foremost, with this medical examiner that did the autopsy on Chloe, as well as with the interrogators that really seemed to coerce a confession, but we'll get to that later. This case has caused me a little bit of problems because yes, I do think that Kelsey was the one that caused Chloe's death, but whether or not it's being proven in court is another question. And I have a lot of unanswered questions so far. Let me ask you guys a question. If you had two children and one of them, heaven forbid, had just died in a horrible freak accident that happened while you were not watching them or paying attention to them at that moment, wouldn't you want to keep your other child super close to you at all times after something like that instead of either sending them to a friend to watch them or more oddly agreeing to have a cousin watch them, a cousin whom you repeatedly said you are not close to when you're not close to any of your family? That's odd. Another thing that is strange, the fact that Kelsey Thomas put this picture up as her profile picture in April of 2018. April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month. This was put up four months before she either killed her own daughter or was there while her daughter accidentally hung herself. The medical examiner. I think the medical examiner really blew it because she was long and slow, drawn out, and giving random examples, not talking as much about this case, and kind of going off track. It was just too much, right? But it seemed to me that she had kind of believed it was, could have been a hanging up until they got more information. She didn't outright say that it hadn't been a hanging initially, but then she went on to explain the hanging wouldn't have caused all the ligature marks that they found on Chloe. Now, I haven't seen a picture of Chloe's body after the death, which I don't want to see. So I don't know how bad the marks were, but she made it sound like when a person is hung, it takes only a few seconds for them to lose consciousness. So they wouldn't be moving around that much. And with a ligature mark, such as with the pants that they supposedly, that were supposedly what hung her, they wouldn't cause a lot of marks on her neck, but she did have a lot of ligature marks. Now, I always thought that a hanging, I mean, yeah, of course you could hang and immediately lose consciousness and, and then die. But even if you look back to when they used to hang people for crimes, there were several people recorded that would hang there for a while while still conscious. It doesn't 
it's not the same for every single person, depending on how you fall, depending on how you land. To better understand a hanging, I looked up some information, and this is what I found. Four types of drop have been used in hanging. The short drop, suspension, standard, and long drop. In all but the last, subjects can remain conscious for minutes and eventually die of strangulation and or loss of blood to the brain. The 19th century long drop through a trap door is intended to be more humane, generating enough force from the tightening of the rope and the twisting of the noose to break the neck. A calculation is made based on the convict's weight, height, and build of the drop needed to break the neck. The distance is typically five to nine feet. When the neck breaks and severs the spine, the subject immediately loses consciousness. Brain death follows in minutes, but if the drop is too short, the subject can be strangled. If it is too long, the subject can be decapitated. Now, if we consider this information along with the height, weight, and build of Chloe, as well as the crime scene information, which would include the drop length and the noose material, for lack of a better word, that would be the pants, we can then factor in these aspects to go over what may have actually happened to Chloe that day when she died. I will discuss this more later, but with regard to the crime scene, which would be the closet and the size of Chloe, I don't see how she could hang because I feel like even if she were able to somehow end up getting herself stuck in the pants in a way that could strangle her, I feel like she would still be tall enough and it would be a short enough drop that she would be touching the ground enough to be able to save her own life. So how this is possible, I don't know. So let's discuss the different stories that were given as well as other theories. What happened on July 19th, 2018, the day that this beautiful five-year-old girl, Chloe, died under a very strange situation that is still very questionable. So from what I understand to be th the facts of this particular day, Kelsey was home with the two children and Aaron had gone out because he was detailing one of his friend's cars to make some extra money for the family. So he was out doing that and Kelsey was home with the children when Aaron got a phone call from Kelsey. Apparently, as Erin put it, she sounded pretty bitchy in her phone call. She wanted to know where the hell he was, why he was taking so long, that she had to get going to work. And it was strange to him because she usually left for work at a certain time and it was still early. So it didn't seem right to him that she was so concerned about when he was going to get home. They had a set schedule that they usually followed, so he did not necessarily need to be back yet. So he got off the phone with her. She was very mad. He was going to be heading home shortly anyway. Maybe five minutes later, he gets another call from her. But this time when he answers the call, instead of her being irate, she is flustered and speaking and he's not really understanding what's going on. So all he did was kind of get the gist that he heard the word Chloe and he heard a scared Kelsey on the phone. So he rushed right over thinking something was wrong with the kids. And when he got there, there was already police and emergency vehicles all over the street. And they were getting into the ambulance. He didn't know what was going on, but he was freaking out. And actually the EMT say that Kelsey was also having a pretty normal freak out over her daughter. But then it gets tricky because the story of what happened to Chloe was strange. And I have to say that Kelsey Thomas did continue to have the same story 
for the detectives about what happened to her daughter, five-year-old Chloe, the day that she died. She told that story during what I would consider to be a pretty crappy interrogation by detectives. I suppose it was good in the fact that they got a confession, but if you ever wanted to see an example of a an extremely coerced confession, this would be ideal. Because even though I can't say whether she did kill her daughter or she didn't kill her daughter, I would have to say that she was really pushed into finally giving a confession. And she was in the interrogation room with these two detectives. I, I want to say about 14 hours, maybe a little less. Over a two-day period, mind you. 14 hours over a two-day period. So the first day, she gave the exact same story the whole way through. She was very calm, very emotionless, didn't seem concerned at all. She was sitting there kind of talking to them as if they were just chatting away. Oh yeah, you know, found my daughter. But she did tell the same exact story for this entire time. And the story was that basically she had been napping. The kids were supposed to be napping. She goes into her daughter's room and she finds her daughter is not in bed. And she sees that she's actually in the closet hanging and unresponsive. So she grabs her out of the closet puts her on the bed and is trying to help her, but her daughter is unresponsive and basically it turns out that she has passed away. So Kelsey sees it as her daughter had what she thinks happened or what she says she believes happened to her daughter was it looked like her daughter had tried to hang a pair of pajama pants in the closet. So the dowel would have been up here and her daughter would have had to climb up onto this rocking chair that was in the room. I'll see if I can find the picture and show you. So she would have had to stand up on her rocking chair, this little rocking chair, and take her pajama pants and tie the legs around the dowel so that, as Kelsey thought, maybe she was trying to make like a swing or something, but that after she had tied it, she must have ended up accidentally slipping and falling and landing with her neck inside the swing, the pants. So she, she had been hung by the crotch of the pants basically that were hanging from the dowel. Um, so it's odd for many different reasons because why she would be tying her pajama pants to the dowel, I don't know, but I can say that I have a 10 year old son and he does all sorts of crazy stuff all the time trying to make different things, especially he's 10 now at five, who knows? Who knows what he was doing? He still does it now, he makes all sorts of stuff. As far as being able to actually tie the pants, um, we'd have to kind of figure out what the height of everything is and if it would be possible, but it seemed like the investigators did not see that it would be possible. And also the biggest part that you'd have to consider is if she was able to get up there, tie the pants, get them tight enough, and actually even be able to fall to the point where she lands inside the pants with the pants, you know, as a ligature around her neck, would those pants and that dowel be able to hold her body weight? I believe she weighed about 40 pounds. And I just, I don't know. I would think that if the pants didn't fall off, because how tight is she really, a five-year-old, how tight is she really getting those pants tied on? And if she managed to tie the pants really tight, I don't know if even the dowel would necessarily be sturdy enough to hold on to a 40-pound child. I know that a little five-year-old 40-pound child does not seem large, but when you think about it, if you had put, if you had like a 40, actually one of the things that was talked about during the trial, someone used the example of if you had a suitcase that weighed 40 pounds, it's actually quite heavy when you think about it. It doesn't seem heavy as a person being 40 pounds, but it really is a heavy amount. So if you were to take a 40 pound suitcase and try to hang it from a pair of five-year-old girls pajama pants, tiny pajama pants, like fleece pajama pants, or not even, I think it was like cotton pajama pants on a thin little dowel in this little closet while stepping on a little rocking chair, would that suitcase continue hanging from this? I guess the investigators 
did not think that that was true. I don't know. I mean, I could see one of the things was how was a kid going to make this happen? I think a kid could make this happen, that they could do something like that. People seem to think, a lot of people seem to think, you know, the investigators and the state and whatnot, that a kid would not have tried to tie pants to make a swing. What would be the, why would she be doing that? Why would she have thought to do that? I disagree on that. I think kids do all sorts of stuff like that. Whether or not she was able to do this, and as I said, tight, get it, even get up there, able to make the knot tight enough to hold her and have that dowel hold on, I don't think so. I just don't think so. But I don't know. I mean, I can't tell you for sure. But with that said, Kelsey kept up with that story through the entire first day. They brought her in another day, not the very next day. It was a couple days later. They brought her in and continued talking to her, continued asking her about what had happened. She continued to give the same consistent story about what she did, walking in, seeing her daughter there, putting her on the bed, what have you, trying to help her. She continued with the same story for several more hours. Then you could see that the investigators were starting to show that, yeah, we think you're a suspect. And mind you, I watched this woman for a day and a half, giving a consistent story, but not caring. And I just didn't see that to be, I couldn't imagine that that was honest because I just don't know how she could have sat there just chatting away like it was no big deal, talking about her daughter killing herself. And it was just a couple days later. So you walk in and you see your five-year-old daughter hung to death in her closet. I would be devastated. Even to walk in and see any person hanging, a stranger hanging, I would be devastated. It would be disturbing to see and it would be disturbing to talk about. But she just talked about it like it was no big deal. Then she started to realize, I think, that she was a suspect. The investigators started to make it pretty clear, showing their cards, yeah, we think you probably killed your daughter. This is when she started to have emotion. If I hadn't seen the earlier parts of this, when she showed no emotion, I would have absolutely believed her. She's telling the absolute truth because she went kind of crazy about it. She was swearing at them. Screw you. I would never kill my daughter. I love my daughter. I love my kids. I would never do it. F you. Blah, blah, blah. I would never kill my fucking kids. All this stuff. She went on and on. She was really screaming at them. And they often say, if someone was coming at me, trying to blame me for doing some horrible crime that I didn't do, I'd be screaming at them, telling them, no way, I didn't do it, blah, blah, blah. So she's doing that. Of course, when someone does do that, then the investigators tend to switch it and say, if you didn't do anything wrong, you'd be calm and you'd want to help us. Well, if you think about the entire time she was talking to them, she did act calm and talk to them. And then when she was told she was a, was a suspect in this and probably and they thought she killed her daughter, she did what would be expected and screamed at them. So I it was in my opinion, I didn't know what to believe. I just kind of couldn't help but think that she had to have something to do with it. But that's just my opinion and I who knows, who knows. But Getting back to the facts, the communication between the investigator and Kelsey started getting rough and, you know, hours go by, she goes from calmly telling them what happened to yelling at them for thinking she's a suspect to then going back to being calm and more tired and I'm sick of this and we keep talking about the same thing. And then the investigator started kind of chipping away at her story. So you know, they started saying, well, are you sure you saw her hanging from pants? How were the pants hung? You know, blah, blah, blah. And she'd say, yeah, they were pants. Well, I think they were pants. Well, I didn't really pay attention. I just acted. I just quickly grabbed her. So then once she started kind of, they got into her head. And even she said that, you guys are getting into my head. You're getting into my head. You're messing with my head. She started questioning herself because they're now telling her, they're putting it in her head that maybe you didn't see her hanging from pants. Maybe that's not what happened. So... Her story keeps kind of changing, but they are coercing this. I'm sorry. They are coer it's, a, it's such a coerced confession, which I think ruined the case in all honesty. But eventually they start getting her to admit to other things that I don't think were true. 
So she says, okay, maybe I did start fighting with, with her. And she says she, Kelsey, the mother, wanted to take a nap. And she couldn't get the five-year-old daughter to lay in her bed. So she kept arguing with her. And she found herself pushing her into her bed. So she said, I did push her chest repeatedly. That could have done it. I don't know. And, and then they're like, well, you know, because she had ligature marks. So then she gets to the point where she's saying, well, when I pushed her, her shirt may have gone up. And it would have wrapped around her neck a little bit. Maybe that's what happened. Then they get to the point where they're saying something must have happened where something was you know, maybe pulled up. So Kelsey then gets that into her head and says that Chloe was trying to run away when she was telling her to get into bed. So she just saw this, the, the pajama pants. Um, I think she said on the bed and I'm not sure though, that might be wrong and just picked them up and kind of instinctively held them by the feet and threw them out and basically lassoed her daughter in. She threw the pants, the crotch wrapped around her head, and she pulled her back. And and then, you know, they got her to lead up to, like, well, she had to be pulled up. So she then says, then she, she must have pulled on the pants and held the daughter up for a, a minute or so. And that must have been what ended up strangling her. So let's just think about that for a minute. Uh, what? what the investigators went decided you know they pushed for this story to be told by kelsey they pushed for kelsey to tell a story of suddenly becoming a cowboy and lassoing her daughter into a pair of little five-year-old girls pajama pants um sure i guess that's a possibility do i think that that's how this little girl was killed no i absolutely do not think that is the story that is not the truth of what happened to this little girl and it's interesting because the reason that these investigators pushed the story about being kind of that, that the girl had to be pulled up was because there was there was strangulation marks on the girl's neck in the front but also there was like a bruise in the back so they were trying to get it to make sense with the bruise in the back. Now, it turns out that the bruise in the back is actually from when the autopsy is done. There's like a little block that holds the head up, I guess. So it goes behind her neck. So that would be what, what caused the actual bruising. So it was really completely ridiculous to kind of coerce, I'm sorry, coerce that's that in, in uh, coerce that confession into Kelsey's mind and get her to say that because then it ruins the entire case because it's so ridiculous and not believable and it doesn't make sense. So the story doesn't seem logical and it really just makes it look bad on the investigators that they got her to make up this story. I don't know if the, it was the interrogation that led to end up getting a mistrial in the first degree murder. I can't say whether or not she's guilty of murder or not. I personally think she is probably the reason that Chloe died. I think that it's possible for it to happen, for a child to get into something like that. I don't think that she would have, I just don't see her really strangling herself that way. Even if it happened, I feel like she'd be able to have gotten out of it. But I just feel like the, something would have fallen before she she was strangled that way. I think that Kelsey did do something to her and then came up with this story to have an excuse. But the investigators went the wrong way in trying to prove her as the, a murderer. And the thing that really makes no sense to me is that they were they were saying that the daughter couldn't have hung herself by accident because the way the ligature marks were and everything else, it just didn't look like a hanging. But then they were basically saying, trying to get her to confess to something that was pretty much a hanging. They got her to confess to wrapping the pajama pants around her neck and holding her up in the air. How is that different than her hanging from the pajama pants in the closet by the dowel? They're the exact same thing. So I don't get it. 
how can you say that there's it couldn't have possibly been a hanging because the enemy is now saying that it doesn't look like a hanging based on the ligature marks and things like that which like i said i didn't really understand what the, the emmy was going for there and she had even said initially that wasn't even her story initially she thought it could have been the hanging but then I th it was it was kind of it almost it sounded to me and i'm not going to say this is definite don't quote me on this don't get mad at me for this but it sounded to me like the ME and the investigators just ended up talking to each other too much and giving each other too much information that kind of got all mixed up and led to this ridiculous investigation. Now, do I think Kelsey should have been investigated? Absolutely. I think the whole thing is very shady. She told several stories of even whether she was napping or not napping or whether Aaron was home, whether he wasn't home. And the thing about suddenly wanting Aaron to hurry up and get home because she wanted to go to work. I thought that was kind of strange. Like she was trying to suddenly hurry up and leave the house. And then all of a sudden, a couple minutes later, she realizes that her daughter's been strangled in the closet. Um, that seems weird to me. So I do think that she did something to her. And being that there was ligature marks, she probably, I feel like she had to have strangled her or something. They didn't think that the ligature marks looked like they came from the pajama pants. So what, they could have come from something else. Did they say that it wasn't hands? I think they said it looked like ligature marks, so it wouldn't have necessarily been her hands. So who knows? There was no real DNA to work with here because this is Chloe's stuff. Her DNA would be on it anyway, and her mom's DNA would be on it too. It's just it doesn't make sense. Another weird factor was that there was vomit on the bed where she had put her daughter down after she pulled her out of the closet, supposedly, as far as her story goes. But there was no vomit anywhere else. There was no vomit on her clothes. There was no vomit in the closet. There was no vomit on the floor. Only on the bed. So is it possible that she strangled her daughter somehow on the bed and then decided to use this other story and go with that. I wonder if she really did kill her and then actually did try to put her in the closet and then have Aaron come and find her, but then it didn't work the way she expected it to. So she just, uh, decided to call the police. I don't know. I don't know, but I do think it's a shady situation. And I do think that she probably did something to her daughter to kill her daughter. I don't know how they're going to be able to prove that if it is the case. And also with the um, child endangerment, that one was a not guilty verdict by this jury. And I have to say, I was sure that, of course, child endangerment, I didn't even think about the child endangerment because I thought absolutely that's a guilty so, you know, we figured, all right, she's at least going to get child endangerment until they figure out what they're going to do about the mistrial. And it was not guilty. I was really surprised because I thought, regardless of how anything happened, if her daughter was left alone and ended up accidentally hanging herself and, die and killing herself as a five-year-old little girl because her mother was not paying attention, I mean, accidents happen, sure, but I just expected the jury to go with um, a guilty on that. It's just a, a strange story. And it's not like this was this super wonderful family. I don't know if, who we're supposed to believe because, you know, Kelsey's family and her supposedly didn't hang out too much. And they didn't get along too much other than at family functions. But then, like I said, then why is she allowing her cousin to take care of her little baby boy after she just lost her kid. I mean, come on, wouldn't you want to take care of your kid? I know people grieve differently, people behave differently, but a couple of days later and you're fine hanging out, no problem, no tears, no nothing, I don't understand. I don't understand. So, We'll have to see if she's retried. I just find it really amazing that so many of these cases are coming forward. People are killing their children often. And not only that, 
but they're getting away with it a lot of the time. There's a lot of not guilty verdicts when it comes to mothers, particularly, that kill their, their kids. And I guess it's just very difficult to prove these things when, you know, you can't really rely on DNA because the parents' DNA would be everywhere anyway. And, you know, it's kind of he said, she said, hearsay. It's a hearsay case. It's just very difficult to prove. But it's scary. It's, it's scary because the more the more parents get away with this, the more parents do this. So it just keeps going in circles. So that's it. Uh, another awful case. Another mother that kills her child. This again is like the Cheyenne Harris case that I also did a video about. Please check that one out. The link will be below. The next case I'm going to talk about is a girl who killed her parents. Let's flip it up a little bit. I'm going to talk about this girl who killed her parents. It's an older case. And another case that I'm going to talk about, I got from one of our viewers, Bonnie. This is from you. Uh, the story of Amy Allwine, which she discussed because it was similar to the Todd Mullis case. It was a case where the father killed the mother and then had the, the son go and find her. So that made her think of the Todd Mullis case. Ani, thank you for telling me about that. I'm going to be bringing that case up soon and a few others. So stick with me and maybe next time we will be out and about watching YouTube instead of sitting at our house waiting to be let out. Okay, I hope everyone's happy and healthy and thanks again for watching. I hope you guys will please like, share, please subscribe. I really, really am close to hitting that 1000 and I would love to do so. And I would love for you guys to help me out with that. So if you can subscribe and if you are already subscribed, if you can share and of course comment and let me know what you think. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great day. Bye guys. Thank you so much. She said she did not want to go into the house because it is where she had just watched her daughter die. However, she then corrected herself and said it's where she found her daughter already dead. So whether it was a slip of the words or correct, it was not the right thing to say. Again, we have a case that was very strange, factually unreliable, and with an improper investigation that probably made it very difficult for this jury to find her guilty even if they believed she had killed this girl.
It is also interesting to note how Kelsey's family, in particular her mother, found out that her granddaughter was dead. It seemed pretty clear based on comments made by the family, comments made by Kelsey prior to arrest, during her interrogation, and during trial, that she wasn't particularly saddened by losing her daughter. She didn't seem upset at all to anyone. So, uh, when you say the chair was upside down, so like, was that a normal thing for her to climb on it, or was no, it broken? Yeah, it was, it was broken, and she didn't want to go to the people having it. Okay. So she wanted to keep it there, so we could put it in there and keep our other, you know, to keep our son from climbing on it, or hurting himself and everything else. So we just That's put it in there. Or Coming up, 
lifted her up, just, you know, to set her up to, because I thought she was breathing, and she wasn't, so I laid her back down, I called 911, and then my son came. So you said that you pulled her out, how did you okay. uh, I just, and well, I had shoes in my hand, so I instantly dropped my shoes, so I went to pick her up. And when I lifted her up, her head, because she was swinging on her, right. her head came and down the bed. Just how, how did you grab her to pick her oh, up? Oh, I didn't know. Okay. Do you remember what the pants looked like? They, 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 and she had tied her family up in the middle. So the pant legs were up on it. They were just up here. Was it like oh. one leg or both legs? She had both legs tied. Oh, okay. Yeah, she had both the legs tied, and that's what was standing on the floor. So the pants were the pants. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Y
I'd rather maybe sit in two where it's young and kind of butting the dogs in um, from outside and that sort of thing. And so make sure the lights are off and they're left. Yeah. And the chair. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
usually it's kind of like a SIDS protocol is what this is. the jury that uh, completes the playing of states exhibits 53A and 53D. We are now going to take a mid-morning break. Please remember all the prior admonitions. Keep an open mind. Don't make up your mind. You haven't heard all the evidence. Don't talk to anyone about this case. Pay no attention to any media accounts. Do no investigation on your own. And we will be on break until 10.25 by the clock on the wall.